the orthogenetic principle of development. This was formulated by Heinz Werner in 1948 and Werner and Kaplan in 1962, both of whom were at uh, Clark University right down the road in Worcester, Massachusetts. The orthogenetic principle says what? It says when development happens, it moves from a state from a global and undifferentiated state to states of increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. That's a lot. That's a mouthful. Do you understand it? I doubt it. But you will in a few seconds. So stay tuned. Let's unpack this. Let's start with embryogenesis, which is where the concept of the orthogenetic principle actually comes from. It's an organismic idea. It's based on an organismic metaphor. So embryogenesis, we start when the sperm and the egg come together. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, we get a zygote, a single global undifferentiated cell. And soon thereafter, within, the, within embryogenesis, that single cell splits, and those cells split, and those cells split, and those cells split, and so forth, into a process called cleavage. Where you had one cell, now we have many of the same type of cells. Then the cells begin to specialize. And in early specialization, they, they begin to take shape, to become different from each other, further differentiated from each other. So that, you know, we have some cells are becoming heart cells, some cells are becoming central nervous cells, cells some cells are becoming skin cells and skeletal cells, etc. And as this process moves forward, we have increasing specialization where the parts begin to take shape into the various systems that make up the organism until we get to the newborn baby. Now, what you see right before you is the orthogenetic principle in action. That's it. Right there, it, we see increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. But let's break these words down so they have a very clear understanding of them. So when development happens orthogenetically, it moves from a global and undifferentiated state to states of increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. Let's define these concepts. So we start at the beginning. And let's start with the notions of global and undifferentiated. What does that mean? Well, we've got our zygote. And relative to the baby that was going to develop, none of the parts of the baby are in that zygote. You can't see them. They're not yet discriminated from each other. They're not yet emerging. And in fact, uh, there's no specific plan, even in the genes, to create any specific part. The parts don't exist yet. Global means global. Uh, global means general, not specifics, not specialized. That's a general, not specific cell. Undifferentiated means that the parts of the entity that will eventually develop do not yet exist. They have not yet been differentiated or discriminated from each other. Global and undifferentiated. Now let's move to differentiated. When the cells undergo cleavage, we have our initial differentiation, where there was once one cell, now we have many different cells. They're not the same cell, even though the same type of cell. They're identical in their integrity, but there are many different cells where whence there was one. That's differentiation. Differentiation, the parts are beginning to come into existence. They're beginning to become different. At least these cells are becoming different from each other, discriminating. We can discriminate one cell from the other. One cell is different from the other, even though they are the same type move on to integration. What does that mean? Well, when we get differentiation, uh, further differentiation, they are also getting dif differentiation and integration. With specialization, these cells here are becoming different from these cells here, which are different from these cells here. The, the skin cells are different from the heart cells, are different from the skeletal cells, are different from the skin cells, are different from the endocrine cells, etc., etc., etc. There's further differentiation in the process of specialization. But also, in order for differentiation to occur, in order for the heart cells to be different from the skin cells, different from the lung cells, the heart cells have to become more similar to each other. And they have to become more connected to each other. And this is integration. So in integration, the parts are indeed becoming different from other parts, more differentiated, but they're also becoming more similar to each other, integrated, connected. Different types of cells are becoming connected and thus integrated with each other to form, to begin to form different organs, uh, to begin to specialize. 
Let's go to the next concept, increasing, important, because in development, what's happening is you're getting increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. You don't just go from differentiated to integrated to hierarchically integrated. At every single stage, there is some degree of differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. It's simply increasing over time. So here's just one example of something that's going on the whole time of increasing specialization. We're beginning to get specialization. Now we get more specialization. We can see increasing differentiation, integration, hierarchic integration at every single step here. Um, and here's an example of it increasing. Increasing differentiation and integration. Now how about hierarchic integration? It's not enough to say that we're getting differentiation and integration over time. But when we get the baby, we're getting a single differentiated and hierarchically integrated system or unit. The various systems that have been developed before, all of the differentiated parts or systems that have been developed before have become integrated, not just in connected to each other, but they connect to each other as a single whole and work together as a single hierarchically integrated system. All we have, we are composed of multiple subsystems, but those systems do not in, do not operate according to their own principles only. They do inter, they do operate according to their own principles, but not only according to their own principles because they are mutually regulated and connected to other systems. The cardiovascular system is is connected to the um, the muscular system and 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 if i'm moving uh, that's going to cause changes in the cardiovascular system etc cetera, etc cetera. but all the systems are coordinated into one single organism and that all the systems work together within the organism uh for to so it can function as a single integrated unit the orthogenetic principle when there is development it moves from a global, undifferentiated state to states of increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchical integration. Now, if you understand that now, you've unpacked and learned a lot. And this concept can be applied to anything that develops. The modern day car is a more differentiated, integrated, and hierarchically integrated system than the early car. We have more parts. Those parts are more specialized. Those parts are more inter interconnected. Those parts are more hierarchically connected to function as a single system, even though it's a mechanical body. We want to talk about the development of a nation. Okay, You start off with a very early primitive government, and you can move toward increasingly differentiated government with different bodies and different uh, people working together in different systems. But those systems should be working toward an increasingly hierarchically Connected doesn't necessarily mean somebody's in charge or in that type of hierarchy, but it works together as a system. And to the extent that it does not work together as an integrated system, it is less developed will become the idea. Um, and we might see that some of that is happening right now in, in, uh, in our own country. And there's many, many examples otherwise. A developing plant becomes its parts, becomes differentiated and integrated and hierarchically integrated over time. Uh, we can talk about emotions developing. Uh, from uh, less um, from from less from more globally global states to differentiated states, the baby begins to exhibit um, um, anger, surprise, joy, uh, um, to more differentiated emotions like jealousy and pride and shame, to a more hierarchically integrated capacity to reflect upon and regulate the emotions. Development moves toward increasing differentiation, integration, and hierarchic integration. Hope you got it. I hope that helps. Thanks.